Hey guys, what's up? My name's Tommy D. I have a channel called Talking with Tommy D. I want to encourage you guys that watch these videos to please subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button on the videos, leave a comment, and encourage you to support the Kensington Outreach that I do every Monday in Kensington. I appreciate you guys watching. The videos that I show are about my life, my life here with my boys, my life in my recovery, and Kensington, the life that I used to live when I was down there. I go down there for each week to give back to the community that I once exploited. I try to help as much as I possibly can, inspire a little hope into somebody that could possibly make a change and do what I did, climb out of Kensington. So the videos that I show can be very graphic Please watch them with some discretion, but it's real life awareness about what's going on. I appreciate everybody. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and have a blessed day. Today, I guess he was running a little bit behind. But, I was right over there. On this side. Okay, I was, I was talking about putting the right here. Yeah, I was right down there. And then, because they were feeding over there, so I just came over here. I just want everybody to take the rest of the water they need. Um, can you give him the sum up there, buddy? Yeah, thank you. Done. Hey, I appreciate that. Thank you. Mike. God bless y'all. Appreciate it. Yeah. So we're back out here in McPherson Park. We're out back out here with Brian. We're going to do an update with Brian, see how he's doing. How you been, man? Yeah, I'm still living. Yeah. I, uh, then while we, can we take a look at your hand, see if it's gotten any better? This is Brian's hand from last week. It's it's been healing. Have you had stuff for it? Have you had been able to yeah, keep it covered? Yeah, I've been putting ointment on it. Good. Uh, you know, bandages. They had another thing down there yesterday. Prevention point gave it to you. Yeah, uh, they went in and like I seen the doctor and they had like this uh, stuff that helps keep it stuck together. They put some clean bandage on it and uh, you know gave me a little bit of bandage and stuff to go. Okay. Not for a couple of days anyhow. Uh, oh, but good. just being out here in this environment like. It's, that's not an easy task. No. Like, it's not. Not to survive, right? I have to say, though, like, with some of the resources here, like you and, you know, a few others, like, it, it makes it a little more bearable to where if this diet wasn't available, man, like, how shit would really be. So you're like, going to get something to eat at least once in a while. Eat and drink and, uh, you know, like, a little bit of cosmetic stuff they get from time to time. Uh, like, I I have to say it's a plus, like, to yeah. work out like you know like with, just with the food situation like yeah. you know you bring down pizza you bring down water and like to where you know like if that wasn't available like how it'd be like people would be looting these stores hard like, okay <laughs> so you're saying that the fact that we are out here people come out to feed you guys once in a while the organizations the outreach groups the, the fact that there are so many people out here feeding you guys is keeping it a, a, on a lid on it, so to speak, More as far as level, the as far as like yeah, the story is still that still crime. occurs, of course. But for the most of it, like it keeps enough in them to where they're not as eager, like you know, pressed to do something like that. Gotcha. You understand what I'm saying? Like just go in and boldly start just taking shit because of hunger. the hunger and the environment just taking control. You know, like the wipes and the. Uh, you know, the wraps and this, like all the stuff that you know, you just make available. Like, yeah. yeah, I couldn't imagine without it. Yeah, like even now, they make it, I have to say, like more bearable in a sense, uh, as far as being in this environment. I couldn't imagine when it gets cold here what it gets like. Winter time, yeah, that's when I actually left, was when I was down here, and I was stuck down here too, homeless in the park. And uh, I went home in the winter time, it was hard, it gets cold, and uh. People really start getting desperate when, when the cold comes out. Yeah, the the I think somewhat the like the powerlessness keeps me here. Like I I think that there's you know some other opportunities that I I could probably turn that corner that I'd be more eager to if a lot of this stuff wasn't available. Like it's coming to that though. Like it it, it is coming to that. Like. Yeah. I'm at the last level, like where I I think in my head like I'd be better off in jail. Mm. A lot of people sometimes. A lot of people say that. Have you talked to your children at all? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're so to a sense, you know, in like their mothers. I, in other words, like I'm good when I have money, and then like when I'm not, I'm not as worthy to you know. Talk That's to the them. feeling like, you're getting. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I get that. Like, 
It sort of sucks because I don't love my children any less. I, I just make bad decisions using. And, yeah. Uh, coming into Kensington, like, I, I never experienced anything like this. Ever. Yeah. I've never even imagined that there was a part of the world that ran like this. I, it blew my mind the first day I came here. Like, when I was in prison, I heard stories about this place, and I believe some of it, you know, but then, like, experiencing the story. first day, like, how shit had gone, and, like, I'm just walking down the street, and people are shooting up in their neck and smoking crack, and there's the cops, They're like, not and, doing like nothing. And nothing, 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 just nothing. Just watching. Like, it. Not that that's not, like, what a drug addict pretty much would want, you know what I'm saying? Wouldn't have to worry, but. I have to say, like, in Pittsburgh, like, if you stagger down the road, like, they're locking you up. They, you know what I mean? They don't have to see you like use anything. The if they just too. see you visibly intoxicated, they're, they're locking your ass up. It's like that out in the county, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, man, like, I just, I have to say thank you to, you know, you in general. Like, you, you operate pretty much on your own. You come out here, you volunteer your time, you know, resources you help us with and everything just to make a... a more stable, okay, of a place, dude. Like, Just trying to, trying I to, dig make, it, man. trying like, to help you a little bit. I dig it because I'm trying guys, to inspire some hope out of people to, to climb out of this place that they don't have to live this way. Right, even if you just save one life, like you did something. Yeah, like, I'm trying to. Yeah, and I'm hoping that you'll you'll go to rehab, Ryan, eventually. You know, yeah, I'm working I do. On you. I do. Little by uh, little, I'll get you. Ah, uh, <laughs> so say, uh, it's it's job. I know how it is to be stuck like, out here. Though. Every day, like I get a little further ahead, and then I get stolen. Yeah. Like, I was down here yesterday, and uh, I was standing there talking to some chick, and like I turn around, my one bag's gone. About two hours later, like I'm sort of leaning up against the wall, sort of fall asleep, and I wake up my other bags on, like just with some blankets and just like that, cosmetics and shit, just like that. Mm -hmm. Just some petty ass shit that people take. Like I don't even get what they get out of taking some of this shit, but like it's a doggy dog world here. It is. It's a doggy dog world. It is, and the only thing that's going to change about Kensington is you not being on Kensington. I'm just going to tell you that this place has been steadily like this. I mean, for the last 20, 30 years, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. I mean, just like that with the, the dark fight going down the street. Like, yeah. if you had two brand new children yep. in the back of your car, and he comes running through with that willy and makes another car turn into the car you're in, and they head on with you and kill your two children because of that's going on. There's that, plus not to mention all the, the hazardous materials on the ground, the drugs, the drugs, the uh, drugs are just killing yeah. this place, brother. It's just, it's insane, and um, they're getting more and more dangerous. About the awareness about the drugs on the street, have have you using, have anything happened? Um, besides that, I mean, I know we, talk, we talked about that. You, you shot up in your hand, and it got, it got what? It just didn't heal? Is that well, what yeah, it got a little irritated in that area. Um, what was it going to say? My veins has always just been bad as far as hitting. But even though I was a little irritated, I still was able to get a hit in there like a couple more times. And then it got, bad. It got to the point like where it was so agitated I didn't want to use it. But then like the area began to grow a little bit. And then like in three days from there, it just went haywire. It blew up to the point like where it looked like I had a rubber hand on. I couldn't even close my damn What made hand. you use in that area? Because it was easier to use? Yeah, it. to hit. It was just, hit. you it wouldn't was, have to worry about missing, it was just that easy. Right. People sometimes wonder, why are people still using in these open wounds? Why are they still open? Well, it wasn't open, but, but it was like, it was like, it was like when I hit and then I missed some of it as it was going in, I'm pushing in because I'm so dope sick, like I get the hit and I'm pushing it in, but then it jumps out, but I'm just like so eager and sick, I push the rest of it in. Makes it agitate a little bit, but then later on that day, I use it again, I'm able to get a hit, I push it in. And wow. then, like, three days, though, from that, like, it got to the point, like, where it was, like, even if I bumped it a little bit, it was, like, it, it was burning, a burning sensation. Uh, and then, you know, a couple of days from that, like, it got to the point where I couldn't even close my hand. And I, I went to go to rehab. Uh, the pastor here, uh, Ron, is the one that takes me over. And, okay. then, like, they're evaluating me. The but they seen the area and they're like oh no 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 like we you know we can't accept you like that like you got to go to a hospital and get cleared so they take me to the hospital i go there and let me tell you the piss poor like uh experience there like i in that hospital jefferson and they say that's one of the nicer ones but like 
down in the ER area, I had been in bathrooms where people were getting high that were cleaner than I. I it just blew my mind, like, that whole experience. And so, like, they popped the abscess with this knee. They numb it, and then they pop the abscess. And, you know, it's fine. It's like a lot of dead skin right there. But then I see him pulling the scalpel out. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, like, yeah, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, it's got to be cut down a little further. Like, it's still infected. And I'm like, it's not bothering you no more. And he's like, it's got to be cut. So I take professional's opinion. He cuts it more, you know, and they stick me in this room. And I'm there for like another day. And like, I mean, you can literally see down in my hand. Uh, and they're coming back in the middle of the day telling me I'm being discharged. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Is it going to discharge me with my hand being like this? They're like, ah, oh, you'll be fine. Like, blah, blah, blah. And Do you need any calls for it? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. All right, we're going to stop it. Uh. Well, I'll stop at Prevention Point. If I can't get in there, I'll go to Walgreens and buy you some. Awesome. Just to make sure you have them before I leave. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, the last thing I wanted to say, um, where are you sleeping at night? Uh, I've been sleeping down in front of Prevention Point. Okay. Because there's a lot. Uh, there's security down there at night, even though... Is it like a shelter? Or no, well, I mean, you? it's right there on the street, but they have, mm. you know, three security officers there at night. It's okay. all lit up, and so it's less tolerated you I know what I'm saying it. like or it's I not going like up here in, in this park at night like it's the jungle yeah. like Try if you can't fight way. like they're gonna take your shit every night I've watched them do it to person after person I got into it two younger dudes just the other day about it how did uh, that go what, what happened I got into it with the one the other boy you tried, tried to jump me yeah over a bag of dope over, and okay. The other boy tried to jump in because I was getting out on his boy but the older poppies were like uh 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 let him get the fair one and he just thought because I was a little older. So I tore his little ass up in the park like, motherfucking. <laughs> yeah, they were all laughing at him too, clowning him. Like, but, uh, and yeah. it was, he was trying to take your bag of dope? Yeah, over a bag of fucking dope, man. Like, he tried saying it was his. Like, I was laying in the winter and then he, like, come about an hour later, like, sort of laid a little further away from me. I had the bag of dope for the wake up and, like, I see him get up, start wandering around. And then, he sees the bag crumbled on my hands like you got my shit and I was like I ain't got your shit bro like blah 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 and he's like you can give me my shit old head like I was like I ain't giving you nothing and like we start going at the other boy tries to get into it with me because it was his boy and but the older poppy guys are like uh 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 let him, let him get it yeah. Yeah. so he went at it right over here on the other side where most people got their tents and uh that was it. I tore his little ass out. I even got a couple punches on him. But I tore his little young ass out pretty good. Yeah. Like, motherfuckers, though, man. Yeah. Like, they don't give a fuck. They don't. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it is like a jungle out here, man. But I just want you to know that, like, we come out here every single Monday. When you're ready to go to rehab, man, we'll make the necessary steps to do it. Do you think you'll go to rehab if you had the actual opportunity right now to go? Yeah. Like, to actually... Get in the car and, and, and drive there. Yeah, White yeah. Deer Run. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's where you're, you're still trying to get back to White Deer Run. Yeah, I know I can get in there. Just need to set it up. And if I had someone to take me there, it'd make it even easier. Just to drive you up to White Deer Run? Yeah. That's what you need a ride up there? Yeah. White Deer Run wouldn't pick you up? They do, but it's like a process, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So without having the phone and like not having access to the prevention point 24-7, to you know, stay counter reactive with them, like it makes it a little more. Maybe I can assist you with that. Uh, with, with at least the phone, the, the, uh, the call to maybe try to get you a ride back up there. Yeah. All right, that's what we'll do, and maybe we'll talk with Brian next week, or maybe Brian will be in rehab. Pray for Brian, though. All right, thanks a lot, right. Brian. Thank you. Salute.